Hey, welcome to Fans of the Forge. We are back on our Forge and Fire bullshit right yeah, now. Yeah, about that. <laughs> so we are here for season six, episode one. A new season. A new season. A new season. Uh, any guesstimates how long this one will be? I've heard estimates of 60 episodes. Oh, perfect. So Can't we just have three seasons for that amount of episodes? You very easily could have three seasons. But we start with episode one, The Long Road to Redemption, part one. This one had an interesting concept. This week, it was bro- it's going to be broken up into two weeks. They said right off the bat, they start off with seven smiths. They'll be competing in five challenges, and the winner will get $20,000. All right. So that's pretty good. So that's a double prize from their normal thing, and it's giving some of these people that didn't win the chance to to win some money. Right. So getting right into our contestants, we had a friend of our our show, Matt Barry. Matt Barry. What? Whoa. We just interviewed him last month. (laughs) No, Matt Barry. (laughs) He was from the season five episode, The Maasai Spear, and he was on this redemption episode because his spear broke during the final round when he was testing. On the first hit, it broke. Yeah. yeah. The first hit across the spine of a pig, it broke it. Yeah, it broke the handle. Next. Oh, and just as we go through here, I do want to remember to, to say their um, Instagrams. So Matt Barry's Instagram handle is... Hopkins Forge on Instagram. Next, we have David Sowards Emmerds from the Grim Reaper Scythe episode. And he needed redemption because during, it was like round one of that episode, he dropped his knife on the floor. Was it one or two? Because he was drilling. Maybe it was round two. He dropped his yeah. knife on the floor and it broke in half into two pieces. In half. In half. Half. And then he uh, welded it, I think, back together, but it was just not good enough to make it to the final round from there. And he is Drunken Marmot Forge <laughs> on yeah. Instagram. And then we have Ray Lynn Vander Wiede. I, I couldn't quite grasp Wide. how. It wasn't, though, because Will Willis was pronouncing it a very certain uh-huh. way. Um, at Ray Ray Farrier on Instagram, R A E. R A E Farrier. Um, she was on season five, The Mortuary Sword, which I believe was part of the invitational tournament. Uh, yep, for she was the ferry around. The, the around. And her knife did not meet the specs, and she was eliminated in the first round. The next person we had was Chris Price, was from season four, and his episode was the Tabar Shishpar, which that's an episode I don't think I've seen. Yeah, I don't think so. We'd have to go back and watch that. But at the time, he had just lost his wife to breast cancer. So he was competing on that episode, like, right after he lost his wife. And then he made it all the way to the final round, but just he didn't win after the testing. So he came back. Then we had someone else from this Maasai Spear episode from season five, Aaron Morrison. All right. Aaron Morrison, if you don't remember, was the first competitor <laughs> to not meet parameters in both rounds one and rounds two <laughs> of the show. And he got booted in his second round on that episode. And uh, he was looking to, you know, show that he could read a tape measure here. Yeah. So. He's a Drew Goodson lookalike. He does have a Drew Goodson <laughs> vibe to him, for sure. Then we get to Smith number six, Mark Setzer. He was on season five episode, The Killage, which he was going against Connors Myers Norton, who we interviewed. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and we also met one of the other competitors from that show, Curtis from Freehill Blades that works at a Jason Knight's shop. Oh, right. He right. was on that episode. Right, right. And then finally, we have... Zach Lewis. Oh, I don't know if I said all these people's Instagrams. Yeah, you did. didn't do Chris. Chris, I didn't find. Aaron Morrison, I found today. Th- they'll all be up on the back <laughs> right. behind us. Um, his phone is stuck in his pocket. Uh, yeah, and I don't. Well, I don't want to scroll through Instagram <laughs> right now. But I do know the Instagram for this last person, Zach Lewis. He was on the season four Master and Apprentice episode and made it to the final round after his master had to leave for a 
family emergency. Mm-hmm. So we didn't see this episode. We either. didn't see this episode. <laughs> We've heard about this episode, but we haven't seen it. Uh, we will watch that one soon. But he is Forge and Feathers ah. on Instagram. He owns an ostrich farm. And I've been telling these guys about it because so we want to start one. No, I don't need oh. to deal with ostriches, but he has graciously offered to send out one ostrich egg to whoever wins our 1,000 follower giveaway. Oh, really? So that's going to be part of our giveaway <laughs> once we get the rest of the components in. Oh, but that, man. that is the first thing we can I was going to ask you wow. if it was that guy. Yep, and that's like, him. How many of these guys have farms? Ostrich like this? farms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want an ostrich egg. More than one. Oh, I know. Well, he said he could ship some up here, so we could, right. we could order some from him if we want to get some ostrich oh. eggs. So that'd be cool. Yeah. So this is Zach Lewis again, Forge and Feathers on Instagram, and it brings us to the judges' table. Conspicuously absent from this judges' table was David Baker for like the first time ever. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if he's ever missed an episode. And it was Jay Nielsen at the table, Doug Marqueda, and Ben Abbott. Which, Jay Nielsen and Ben Abbott, have they ever been on an episode together? I don't, I don't mm. know. Did Jay, Jay judge I, him? Well, I, <laughs> as he, judges, He, he might have one know of them. But I don't know if together. I know Jason Knight was a judge for one of Ben Abbott's episodes. Yes. I don't know if it was both of them. Anyhow. It, it, that, ben Abbott won the episode that had Jason Knight there with Jay Nielsen, Doug, and David Baker, I believe. I oh. think they, it was, that was the judge's pick oh, episode. Yeah. It was Ben Abbott versus Mareko Mamasi in the final round. And uh, so that's how that played out. Anywho. Good job. That memory there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Th- well, we, yeah, thanks. <laughs> and, okay, so moving forward. <laughs> <laughs> this is the he can't remember normal life I shit, but he remembers this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so everyone's outside in the parking lot and it looks like it's a little cold outside is all I have to say. They're all wearing yeah. jackets. Jay Nielsen really, really looks like he's like bundled up in cold, but everyone else seemed okay. <laughs> and the, the fairy, the, the Smiths and everything, a lot of them were in like short sleeves cause they're going to, they knew they were going to be working at a forge. So they were probably going to be mm. staying warm. They had layers. They had layers. Yeah. So we move into round one. Okay. Round one. Guess what, everyone? They're outside. What does that mean? It means coal forges. Oh, yes. Ah, big surprise. <laughs> so <laughs> they're all given coal forges. One of the first things I noticed, though, is they don't have the little hand crank, you know, turbine to pump air into the forge. So it looks like they're all, like, motorized somehow. They had blowers. They had blowers mm-hmm. on them. So that, you know, helps. Yeah. Uh, however, I'll say during some of the forging, it looks like, the blower's just like full tilt and pumping a lot of air in there and making it really hot. And I, I don't know if they could control that or not. I'm thinking not. Um, and that might cause some problems during this round. I know Jay Nielsen was, they were asking about the coal forges. And I think Jay Nielsen was talking about how you're supposed to properly start it up, and get it super hot, and then lower it. it and, back off. Yeah, let it back off. But again, but it didn't seem like they were able to either easily do no that. no one knew how to do that or they weren't able to do that. Yeah. Uh, anyhow. So the Smiths are given a uh, piece of 1095 bar stock and they are tasked with creating a throwing knife with a blade between 7 and 9 inches. It must not exceed 22 inches overall length. Uh, one person will be eliminated in the inspection and then six move into the forge for weapon testing, which means they need a functional blade in three hours. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. So they all kind of have a shot. And uh, starting off with Matt, um, he hasn't used a coal forge in 25 years. Um, <laughs> this was kind of weird. So he, he kind of had his starting off, and then... He was kind of squirting water out of his mouth around the outside perimeter of the coal. I, <laughs> for some reason. For some I reason. Get, well, to get, control probably more control, yeah, because he had a water bottle. It wasn't like a spray bottle. Was, he, he would have to be dumping water out. Maybe he didn't want like all that water in one spot. He wanted to have less. To each their own, because I would just put my thumb over the top and like squeezed it and just done that. He wanted 
to that didn't as Ben to said, uh, does a mama bird on this <laughs> forge. Um, so uh, he starts getting tired by hammering from hammering by hand. Normally he would just have a press. Um, or and, power hammer, I think yeah. He said. Um, and then he burns off three inches of steel and ends up cutting off the damaged end. So he just got careless, left it in there for a little too long. He was doing pretty well up until that point. Oh, yeah. Um, he had things going pretty well, then pulls it out, and it's just that white hot, and then it just falls right off. Um, so he cuts that part off and then focuses on heat treating in the last three on the last three inches of the blade. Moving on to David uh, cuts a short piece off to stretch out. He doesn't need the whole bar. So, um, and uh, he didn't really have any major issues and quenched without a problem. Yeah, it's really one of those. Of yeah, one of those cases of the less airtime, the better. Yeah. Moving on to Ray, uh, she burned her metal uh, and cut off the end, and um, was kind of rushing and grinding the edge at the last minute to, to sharpen it. She had a thick blade going on there. Mm -hmm. She was up against the clock. Like, she had a hard time moving that steel, and she had a really thick, you know, piece. They had mentioned that she, you know, burned the end of it, so maybe she was a little bit afraid of of making it too hot again, so she wasn't She didn't want to burn it again. So, um, moving on to Chris. Uh, He was getting tired and had to do some push-ups to loosen up his arms. Um, no real issues prior to the quench. Um, then laid it between two large slabs of aluminum to, f- you know, keep it from warping. Moving on to Aaron. Judges were impressed with Aaron's slow, methodical work. Not much else to say. Yeah, he was doing good. Yeah. Uh, and Mark, he broke off the end of his billet. That burned off. Burns off two inches of his handle. Uh, decides to weld mild steel on for the handle. And quenches the blade, doesn't drop it in oil this time. Just a good move. <laughs> he had to go fishing the last yeah. time he was on the show. And while grinding the blade, finds a micro crack and kind of welds that shut. And finally, Zach Lewis broke off part of his billet as well, cut off an additional quarter inch. The blade burns again, and it breaks in half, and he decides to start over. With not, it was like not an much hour, time. Hour yeah, and a half, an hour. Maybe? Yeah. yeah. Not even half the time, yeah. Um, then he grinds it as best as he can, heats it up in the final minute to get it quenched, but it was not a hot quench for him. No, and it th- wasn't really shaped like a throwing knife no. and didn't didn't turn out as but as he, he wanted, but it was a very good... He didn't quit. He didn't quit, didn't quit. yes. Very. He did a good effort to keep it going. So then for judging, they have seven and they need to narrow it down to six for testing. And then from the six, five will move forward into the next round. And so what they did was they kind of called them in pairs. Uh, Matt and David immediately asked to enter the forge. Mm -hmm. And then it was Chris and Aaron asked to enter the forge. And so we're looking at Ray and Mark and Zach. Um, Mark was the fifth to get sent in. And then it was between Ray and Zach. Ray was allowed to go back to the forge. And so Zach was the one left standing he didn't make the cut, the least refined blade, and the metal wasn't hard, so he got the boot. So once they're all inside, they've got their testing is to throw the knife five times at the wall of wood that they have for, like, throwing knives. Um, Bat went first. It was difficult to control, and the blade broke on the fifth throw. Oh, man. So, like, of course, he's in, like, panic mode. I'm going home. It broke. I'm yeah. done. Oh, yeah. And I felt for it. Like, we know the guy now. We've met him yeah. a couple times now. And so it was like, oh, damn. Like, yeah. it broke. Like, oh, man, I really hope it doesn't play out like this. So we had to kind of see how it was going to go. Mm-hmm. So I got to say, um, Ben's technique for throwing was shit. <laughs> <laughs> because every single blade was bouncing off the wall. Like, there's no way, like, he but, either, sh- uh, I think that's that was intentionally done to see if blades would break. Because if he was at any, then it would just be sticking into the wall. I don't think those are as easy to throw as you think. Because, all right, I've done axe that's throwing it. once, okay? Axes are different. <laughs> But though, but I would have thought they would have stuck into the wall more than they did, and it's not necessarily 
the technique, but it's also what you're throwing, right? And so he's dealing with six different people's different feeling knives, different weights. None of them are consistent. By the by the fifth throw, maybe he's doing better, but it didn't make a difference. When I was throwing the same axe for an hour, I was getting marginally better over time, but that was with an hour yeah, of practice. It's not your job to be a tester. But is yeah, but who knows how often Ben's throwing these knives? He should be throwing ahead of time that day. He should be practicing. This is his test. This is his job. He's given a job to do, and he he was a shit job performer. He's terrible at it. <laughs> those, those things are bouncing off the wall. Like anybody could do that. I could do that. You could do that. <laughs> well, okay. You get any yeah. dude off the street just to chuck a bleed. That's all it seemed like it was happening. And once in a while, he would get one stuck in. But it was like later on. You're not wrong. And Ray's was like boom. Hers were. Her, her, I, I mean, we'll get to that, but it was just funny watching Ray's knife get thrown because it was just. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. So uh, at this point, I had gotten the, the elder child off the school bus, and so she was watching with me, and she, I told her that we had met Matt. So when his broke, she got very upset. <laughs> of course. Um, David was next. It was not perfectly balanced, but his survived five throws. Um, Ray's was difficult to throw because it was heavy and probably not balanced, but yeah, he was weighty. It made it through the five throws. Chris, edge and tip held up well, and it looks awesome. It made it through. Oh, yeah. He did a great job. Yeah, he had a cool, thing. like, flare. Yeah. Ben like, wanted to order a couple. Yeah. Like, did he yeah. did he grind that? Like, he could have forged a lot of that shape out. He didn't show he, him working on it. And right. I would have liked to have seen how he made that happen. Because everyone else was using angle grinders, right? Yeah. They obviously didn't have the no, you know, two by 72s no. out there. Yeah. Um, all right, so then Aaron's was next, and his broke on the third throw. And so where it pinched down to the handle, it just kind of broke apart from blade and handle. Yeah. So, of course, Matt's like, oh, I'm going through, because now we have someone who broke earlier than that. And then we get to Mark, where all he had to do was make it through three. He did not. <laughs> it sticks in and breaks on the first throw. That was shit luck yeah. right there. Because it, it was like Ben finally gets a solid nail shot where it sticks in the wall. <laughs> and then the vibration of it, ding, and it just goes <laughs> flying. Ugh. Mark gets the boot. Yes, Mark did get the boot. And so... You should give Ben the boot. <laughs> <laughs> What's all this Ben hate? What are you... <laughs> a shitty knife thrower. I like Ben. Me too. <laughs> <It's> all right. <laughs> so we move on to round three. There are five remaining smiths that will be going back to their home forge to make a chopper, a competition chopper. And Jay Nielsen told, I don't know if it was a parable or just a story about um, the chefs that were tasked with cooking the perfect egg and over and over again, they would do that same thing. Yeah. It actually reminded me of um, Hero Dreams of Sushi. Do you remember when we watched that sushi oh, yeah. documentary years ago? Did you ever see it? No. Um, it's about this guy, Hero, that lives in Japan and his r restaurant is like in a subway um, platform area. Like you get off the train and then there's mm -hmm. like a little, small little area, which is his restaurant. And he's supposedly got, like, the best sushi in the entire world. Oh. And his son works for him, and he was making rice for him. And the son had been working for him for, like, 40 years. So he's, like, 50 years old. Yeah. And then, then the father was, like, when he was, like, 55 years old, his father was like, you finally learn to make the rice properly. <laughs> <laughs> so that oh my god. <laughs> wow. Oh man, and the, what a dick. <laughs> yeah, but uh it was it was something. So that reminded me of that documentary of that guy, but talking about basically you have to make this very simple and easy thing, but you have to make it as best as you possibly can yeah. and come back with your best version of that so they had to have a 12 to 15 inch chopper had to be their personal best and they were giving two days at the home forge and then they had to return for testing that i liked i liked that it was this two-day period right so mm. it's obviously not the full five days that they would be getting in the past right. but two days 
gives them still 16 hours to work on a basic chopper and come in with something that can do some damage. Yeah. And, you know, it's different when when they go to this part. Usually this is like the majority of the show is already like taken up at this point, but they had to split up five people in their home forging time. So it was kind of rapid fire, but it was yeah. all very interesting. Whereas sometimes when it's just the two people going back and forth, okay, yeah, some stuff's happening. So, Usually leave out a lot of stuff. But this seemed like I, I can remember parts. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, they showed this. Well, that's the other that. thing. They're only dealing with two days worth of material right. versus five days. So they get all the really key yeah. aspects in there. So Matt went with 80 CRV2 steel because he really wanted to have a tough blade. And um, he made a, one mistake when he was working on the grinder and he ground into his spine of his blade yeah. a little bit. They didn't really show how he fixed it, but I'm assuming he, he didn't. He just left it like that? Yeah. See, I didn't notice it when they when he brought it back in. Oh, you didn't notice it? Yeah, it was still there. Oh. Okay. Well, either way, so that was all they showed for him. There wasn't really much he could do other than like grind it, you he know, but he grinded it a lot thinner and then it would And he didn't want to do that. Yeah. So David, um they really only showed him making his Damascus billet and didn't really have any other issues that I noted. Uh Ray she, you know, she's a farrier, and so she felt that the perfect chopper made by a farrier would use farrier rasps, which I thought was a neat approach. Yeah. And, um, but she wanted to weld two together, and the first time she tried, she did not get a good forge weld and had to do a second attempt. Um, she did get the second attempt to work, but when she quenched that one, she was not sure that it was hard enough for the tests that they were going to be putting it through. Chris also made a Damascus billet, um, but as he was going, he ended up finding a bad weld, and he cracked the billet, and then he just cut basically the rest of the billet, whatever was left, and used that to make his chopper. He had enough left, luckily. Yeah. And then Aaron used mono steel. They didn't really say what it was, and they didn't really show him doing much after that. They just showed him starting... And then it, it kind of checked in with him, but no real issues. And then it was the quenching montage yeah. of five different people <laughs> all quenching at the same time. But who knows when they were actually quenching throughout those days. Um, and the only thing to note after that was Matt wasn't as uh, happy with the hardness of his, and Ray had a bit of a warp in hers. So they come back in to the forge for testing sean you want to take over for testing sure so uh the j nielsen pain train comes into the station half for day j the ice block shop and so uh i think you whacked into it eight times yep um so for matt's blade there was no edge damage it was a nice blade um for david um jay said it was a nice piece the handle is very thin and it's forward heavy, but overall it was a good job for Raid. Blade survived. The handle was biting at Jay's fingers, um, and the blade was warped and um, took a twist and lost its edge during the testing. For Chris, uh, he did a nice job. He had kind of a long, thin handle and lost some edge, and it picked up a bend. And finally for Aaron, it was a nice job. The handle was right on the border of being too sharp, Blade stayed true and kept its edge. So uh, the judge's decision was that Ray got the boot because it took the most damage. And so... To be continued. To be continued, because this is a two-part episode. Yes. These smiths that were left are going to be returning. They'll be in the forge. I, I have to assume it's going to now kind of be like... It looked like they went from... The testing of the one thing right into the competition of the next. Yeah, showed them lined up. That would make with, sense. With the steel right there on the anvil underneath the the uh, little piece of cloth. And, you know, right before Jay Nielsen could, not Jay Nielsen, right before Will Willis could do his reveal of what they were going to be making to be continued. <laughs> so I liked how this episode yeah. went. I thought it was a nice return. Especially considering we we should have thought that the Invitational Tournament would have been a better finale to the last season. At least right. they came in strong on Season uh, 6, Episode 1. 
And we're looking forward to seeing how this all pans out. And, uh, yeah, it should be fun one. Agreed. And that's that's that episode. So what else is going on with us lately? We mm. hmm. we did some interviews. If you haven't watched them, go back and check those out, like the one with Jeff Fader of Fader Knives, a.k.a. co-host of Knife Talk Podcast, yeah. amongst many yeah. other things. Funny guy. Very funny guy. I'm with him. We are with him. Also, we did interviews with... Who do we interview? Dave Parthmore. Yep, Dave Parthmore. Um, At the end of last season, we did an interview with Keith Hill. Yes. Um, And then we recently, Sean and I, shot video at the Dragon's Breath Forge for the Hot Sauce Hammer Off. And the... The results of that are already out. Like, people knew right that day that Jamie ended up winning the competition. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. If you haven't you have watched... You have to give the spoiler alert before well, you give the spoiler alert. Well, I, I, I... It was too late. Whatever. I All right. I'll... I spoiled it. Spoiler alert. <laughs> spoiler alert. Spoiler Jamie alert. Jamie won the competition. Oh. There, I like. Oh, well. They already announced it on Instagram. Well, but if people aren't watching that... Or if they don't have Instagram. Chances are most people at least follow... What if Mareka. they only follow us? I highly doubt it. Hey. I really highly doubt it. Anywho, that video will be coming out in the next few weeks. Um, I'm working on the edit for that now. It should be just about done soon. And uh, that might turn into an ongoing series. So that could be, be kind of cool. cool. Um, in the meantime, Sean and I are planning on going up to Massachusetts to do a little forging. That's right. And, you know... We're going to watch some more Forge and Fire next week. Yeah. And, TV. And that's really about it because we don't know uh, if any of the other shows we watch are coming back or not. <laughs> that's true. So we'll see. And uh, that's the episode. So please, if you are listening to this on the podcast, audio podcast only, we know there are people out there listening to it because I see those numbers. There are downloads out there, people. You're getting yeah. aggressive. <laughs> well, you need to go on. <laughs> Wherever you're listening to these things, and give us some stars, baby. Give us some five star reviews. It'll help boost us in the ratings and help us get more people, which is a good thing. It's a great thing because we recently also hit a thousand Instagram followers. Yeah. How fucking nuts is That's that? That's pretty awesome. Gotta Look, say. We're not, you know, uh, Jason Knight with 75,000 or wherever many he has, but we're this little up and coming show about people doing this stuff and we've managed to pull in a thousand followers which, when did we hit 500 that was like september that was October. while we were at yeah pigeon forge garage mass so and middle near the end of september i think so pretty good growth yeah. i think since we started in april let's mm-hmm. let's pass some of these guys <laughs> let's well, pass knife talk uh knife talk's got about mm-hmm. twice as many as us on Instagram. yeah let's go man it's gonna be You're tough next. to pass them you're next. We're not starting any fights with Knife Talk. They're friends of ours. We're in half. <laughs> <laughs> what? We're in half? Yeah, we're you know, half the half. followers. We're half. Anyway, so keep an eye out. We will be doing a 1,000 Instagram follower giveaway sometime soon. Uh, we did There's mention, an egg. There's an egg. Um, all I'm going to say is we've talked to some Forge and Fire winners that are going to be supplying us with some... Forged and fire related components, and we're not going to say anything else right now until we get those parts. <laughs> um, and those are going to be part of the giveaway. I made a thing. Oh, and Teresa. Oh yeah. Crocheted. This thing is awesome. A <laughs> knife banner that is so amazing. I will take a picture of it and have it behind us here. Um, that'll be part of the giveaway as well, and that'll be something cool you can hang on your wall, especially if you like knives. And you don't want to actually have a real knife hanging on your wall. This is the next best, next best thing. So there's that. And uh, that'll be announced soon enough. And thanks, everybody, for watching. And remember to follow us in all the places and all that good stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. See you. Now, I was not expecting... It's a fuzz on like, the wall. I, s- <laughs> I saw a little movement out of the corner of my eye, and I'm like, didn't, th- didn't think twice first, and then I looked over. Oh, <laughs>